Hi everybody! Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about system design basics that you must know if you are preparing for a system design interview. In this video, we are going to answer these three questions. 1. What is single point of failure? 2. What is database replication? And 3. How to use database replication to avoid single point of failure and make your systems more available? In the last video, we created this design and learned about horizontal and vertical scaling. If you have not watched that video, the link is available right here. Okay, now let's dive into our question number one. What is single point of failure? When one component in a system stops working and as a result, your entire system stops working is called single point of failure. Now let's use this design to find the single point of failure. Load balancer is the first component here. If that fails, can your request process successfully? The answer is no. So load balancer is the first component that can result into single point of failure. Now let's evaluate the other components. If your web server one fails, can your request process successfully? Yes, the request can go from load balancer to web server two and to your database. Okay, now we evaluate the next component, our database. If your database fails, can your system process the request successfully? The answer is no. So your database is also a single point of failure. Now let's move on to our question number two. What is database replication? Database replication is a process of copying data from one database into one or more databases. Moving on to question number three, how to use database replication to avoid single point of failure? As you can see, we have only one database. If that database goes down, our entire system goes down. So what we want to do is to replicate database. We want to have one master database and have multiple copies of that database serving as slave databases. Our master copy will support the write operations, meaning your insert, update, and delete statements will execute against your master database. All the read operations will be triggered against the slave databases. Now that we have three databases, we can perform more queries in parallel. That means it automatically improves our system performance. This also provides redundancy. Meaning, if your one database fails, your system can still function with available other databases. This means now your database is no longer single point of failure. If your master database fails, your slave database will be temporarily promoted to serve as a master database and all the write operations will be directed to that new master database. If your slave database fails, then your read operations will be temporarily directed towards your master database. In any system, the number of select statement executed against the database is much higher compared to insert, update, or delete statements, meaning your number of reads are much higher than the number of writes. If your user base continues to grow, you can simply keep adding more slave databases to improve your performance. Now let's say all of these servers are located in Japan and you have two users, one in Japan and one 10,000 kilometers away in Germany. If both these users open your website at the same time, do you think their website will load equally fast? What do you think? Leave me in the comment below. And in the next video, we are going to see how to use cache and content delivery network to improve your response time.